We have vehicles not of this world. And they've shown up in broad daylight, and they've actually deactivated nuclear codes on live nukes. So let's stop pretending like we don't know that's happening, and let's talk about now what happens after contact is made and cover it with solar panels that have the right capacity for conversion, and you can power the entire United States for free. That's all we would need. And so that's why the zero points being suppressed so hard. Enough is enough. People that used to hear me talk about UFOs and aliens and life on other planets, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, are now all coming back to me saying, hey, I can't believe it. You were right the whole time, you know. So they're starting to really believe it, and they're starting to ask more questions. So even though we're not getting the kind of disclosure we actually want from the government, we are getting the fact that they're talking about it enough to where now people are saying, oh, this is actually real. There are potentially UFOs and beings from other planets and so forth and so on. So now it's an open discussion. Even when I'm in restaurants, sometimes I hear people sitting around talking about UFOs and UAPs and aliens, whereas before, a decade ago, I would never hear a conversation like that openly in an open public place. It's just gradually, drip by drip, people are becoming more aware and more understanding and opening their minds more to the reality that we're not alone. And they're starting to ask more questions. So the benefit of all of this Arrow and ATIP and all these other programs, the benefit that we do have at least is the fact that people are becoming more open to this information. Well, one of the advices that I have is to really, uh, a bit of advice I have, I should say, is to really scrutinize the government's version of the facts. If somebody's just getting into this and they're basing their perspective only on what the Pentagon releases or what government press release says, then what they're going to find is um, they're really just following an agenda, which always is about follow the money. There's been a misconception going around for a very, very long time in the way that people have stated and talked about these Anunnaki beings, which are really the, are, are there, they are the Atlanteans. Okay. So when you hear Atlanteans and you hear Anunnaki, we're talking about the same people. See, Anunnaki means those that came from heaven to earth or from another place to this planet, from space to this planet, any being from any planet anywhere in the known universe that comes to Earth is an Anunnaki. Okay, it's a generalized term. Just like if you were me, right? I live in Florida. I live in a city in Florida, right? So let's say Fort Lauderdale, Florida. If I hopped on a spaceship and went to another planet and people were there and they said, well, where are you from? I'm not going to say I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm going to say I'm an Earthling from Earth. You see? And so it's a generalized name uh, is what it is. Now, Atlantean is a specific name of the type of civilization that they built. They built an Atlantean civilization on this planet. And I personally believe after many decades of research and investigation, reading over a thousand cylinder scrolls, tablets, papyruses, uh, ancient texts and so forth, visiting with ancient sages and wisdom keepers and archaeologists all around the world. My personal hypothesis now is that it's not just Earth that was Atlantis. It was also the moon and it extended all the way to Mars and maybe even beyond. They were an interplanetary civilization, not just a ring city in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean that sunk. That was just one capital of many capitals that existed on this planet. But they, in fact, were a interplanetary civilization. They had achieved... Um, what we would hope to achieve in the future. But you have to remember, according to these ancient tablets, they were approximately, approximately one million years ahead of us technologically, making anything that they do or did or still do to this day appear to be magic. When a more advanced civilization meets and engages a less advanced civilization, the less advanced civilization will deify the more advanced civilization. It's called a cargo cult. And what you have here on this planet, you have humanity, which is one gigantic eight billion person cargo cult. That's what we've become. And the deities and everything else that we're worshiping and praying to are not the creator of the universe. There is not one book that exists on this planet. And I've gone through so many, so many more to go through now. Don't get me wrong. That is authored by the hand of God itself. I don't want to say him because him would be an incorrect terminology. You don't give a creator of a universe a gender. There is no gender. 
God is a frequency. And so what we're saying here is this. The text is written by flesh and blood people, except for one text that I know of. There's only one text that's written by one of these beings. It's the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. I wrote my book about this gentleman, right? Look up the uh, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. That's my book. In there, I talk about the, the guy who wrote his own tablets. He authored them himself. He didn't have a scribe write them. The rest of these tablets and scrolls and everything else were authored by scribes, people that one of these entities would dictate to. They called themselves gods, but they weren't gods. They masqueraded as gods, but they themselves even knew that there was something above them because they said the creator of all will answer. They will have to answer to the creator of all for what they've done to people on this planet. So they, they themselves knew that they weren't the creators of the universe because they called several times in the tablets on the creator of all, knowing that there was something higher than them. And so they duped humanity. Uh, some were nice, you know, some were male malevolent, some were benevolent. Some were good, some were evil. Yin, there's Yang. Some wanted to help, some didn't want, want to help. Some tried to kill us off, some tried to save us. You can find this in the, all these different epics, Epic of Gilgamesh, Epic of Atrahasis, the Enuma Elish, and the Seven Tablets of Creation. These texts predate most texts that exist on the planet, with the, excep with the exception of the animal tablets, some of the Vedas, and um, maybe the only thing that will come even close to a written, hand down, handed down text will be the Mahabharata, right? And so the misconception, let me get back to my point that I was talking about, is this is there's this misconception between people that are following the ancient astronaut theory is that the Anunnaki created humans. Now, we have to be careful on how we state this because according to the text, they didn't create humans. In other words, they didn't just from scratch out of absolutely nothing, poof, there's humans here through some type of magic or alchemy or something like that, or they have them, or did they have the creation power? They use genetic manipulation, which we're going to, take a look at tonight we're going to take a look into genetic manipulation that was done in ancient times and this is one of the very first accounts of this evidence of genetic manipulation but going forward into the future even into what you call the modern day bible you find genetic manipulation when it comes to mary the mother of yeshua aka jesus i don't like calling him jesus because jesus means hail zeus and i'm not hailing zeus i'm talking about a real person yeshua which is his real name right Yeshua was also a product of genetic, genetic manipulation through something called vitro and fertilization, as well as his grandmother, who was also a virgin birth, which you never, they never tell you about that in Bible study, that Jesus's grandmother, right? Yeshua's grandmother was a virgin birth. You'll never hear about it. They never talk to you about that in Bible study. Not once have you ever heard, heard that come out of anybody's mouth, except for me, forbidden knowledge. Look it up. Make sure you get all your apocrypha texts, the text that was by accident on purpose, forgotten to be put into the Bible by the Council of Nicaea. That's where you find all the incredible truths at, right? In the book of Enoch, that was he was such an important person that he was spoken about in the Bible, but his book, which talks about these same Anunnaki beings, left out. The Bible talks about the Anunnaki. They call them the Anak in the Old Testament. They say, they say the people that ran into these Anak say that in their eyes, we were grasshoppers in their sight. That's coming from the Bible, the canonized Bible that you take and read and pray to and everything else, right? So these are the Anunnaki, they exist. And these beings, these people that are in these Sumerian tablets, their names are in the Bible as well, but nobody ever reads the Bible, so they wouldn't even know. It's a singular term, but Elohim, the Elohim is the same thing as the Naturu of uh, ancient Kem, ancient Kemet. The Naturu, the Elohim, they're the same exact people. The Pantheon of Sumeria, same exact people. Same exact people. I'm talking about a group of, of, of ancient people that had supreme, te supreme tech and supreme knowledge. The Elohim said this, and this is what made it into the Bible. This is in the Enuma Elish, which predates the Bible. The people in the Bible weren't even in their papa's sacks yet. Okay, <laughs> They didn't even exist as a chromosome yet. They didn't even have a chromosome yet. They weren't even thought of yet. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Does that sound familiar to you? Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Isn't that interesting? 
that you can find this in texts that predates the Bible by tens of thousands of years. So, according to these tablets, this took place some 455,000 years ago, and the, the but that was when they got here, but the creation of the Adamu took place around 300,000 years ago to 200,000 years ago. And that's when Homo, Homo erectus suddenly changed into Homo sapien, according to modern science. The process by which fashioning of the primitive worker was achieved is then described in the Atrahasis epic, as well as in several other texts. It involved obtaining from the blood of the god his tima. Okay, tima, that's probably his DNA. Scholars translate as personality or life essence and mixing it with the ti'it of the abzu. The term ti'it has been presumed to come from the Akkadian word tit, which equals clay, which is why it talks about using clay in the Bible. Hence the notion echoed in the Bible that Adam was fashioned from clay, but it's not exactly what it meant. They manipulated that terminology to get you to believe that somebody picked up some dirt and turned it into a human being. I would never want to be considered that I was just turned from dirt into a person. That means I was just a, a lump of mud. Now I'm a person. To me, that's not magical. To me, that's that's just dumb. Anyway, the life essence of personality of these gods was mixed with the essence of the existing being, of the existing being found here on this planet at the Abzu, which is in Africa. By mixing genes extracted from the blood of a god with the essence of the existing earthly being, the atom was genetically engineered. So, the topic of this is, did the Anunnaki create mankind? In a way, yes, but creation from zero to from scratch, no. What they did was our cousins were already here. We had cousins here. According to these tablets, these beings came to this planet. They saw us. They didn't even care. They were like, whatever, let them do what they're doing. We're going to go ahead and start building this breakaway civilization on this planet, mining these resources and building this civilization out. They had their floor plans. They had their street grid. They had everything they wanted to do laid out beforehand. It's all talked about in the tablets. And Lil said, I'm going to create the plan for all time on this planet. They started doing their work. They went right to work. They never touched us, never interact, never messed with us. But in the Anuma Elish and the Atrahasis epic, something very interesting happens, which goes back to Mars. These EGG beings, these EGG beings, which were also related to these Anunnaki people, these Atlanteans on Earth, they said, man, we're doing too much work. Like you got us out here laboring like slaves. And when we ask for breaks, you don't give us any breaks. How long did they work? According to the tablets, they labored for around 250 to 300,000 years, nonstop, generation after generation. They just kept working, 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 building, building, building. No breaks, no real rest, being worked like slaves. Finally, and read this in the Atrahasis and also in the Enuma, Enuma Elish, they say, you know what, man, this is getting to be too much, you know? I think they think we're slaves here and, and we're not slaves. So we need to go ahead and get some straightening. So these beings, these are GG people, they got together while on Mars. They had a discussion about it. They said, well, time to go to war, time to go to war against the gods of Earth. That's Anu, who was the father. And then Enlil and Ia Enki. That was the Trinity right there. All right. Those three people were running the planet. So what did they do? They got in their ships and they fell from Mars to Earth. They came from Mars to Earth. These are the gods that fell from heaven to Earth in the Bible to go against God, to go against Anu, not the creator of the universe, God, to go against Anu, A-N-U. They show up in uh, Adam's calendar in South Africa, which back then was called the Abzu. They go to the location where they are in the middle of the night, and they encircle the camp. Read this in the tablets. Read it. They encircle the camp. And then everybody begins to wake up because somebody comes and bang, 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 bang on the door. Like, get up. We're here. And like, who's that rabble on my door? What's that rabble on my door? They call it rabble on the door in the tablets. 
They begin to get up and look around. The guards now are waking up. Everybody's looking around like, oh, man, the EGG are here. They don't look too pleased. They don't look too happy. They've got weapons. A new and little Enki, they come outside. The war is getting ready to happen. Enki comes up with an idea, says, I have an idea that might fix the problem. There is an existing, keyword, existing being on this planet. They're talking about our cousins. Before we became Homo sapiens sapien, we were already here. Already. But we weren't Homo sapiens sapien. And we weren't monkeys either. We were advanced people. We were smart people. We were just more spiritually in tune with the planet and ourselves. We weren't, uh, you know, we weren't like we are now with disconnected DNA. They disconnected our DNA and all this other good stuff. And so they said, Enki says, uh, in the tablets, he says, we will take our essence and combine it with their essence. And then we will make them into the workers. They will bear the load of the Anunnaki. What? So they're like, you know what? We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, let you do this. All right. And so now very good point. Kelvin brings up here. And thank you for the donation. The Anunnaki had considered one of their considerations was artificial people ai sound familiar artificial beings sounds a lot like robotic ai <clears throat> and the brother said no we they had a few of them in the medical place that they had this, this medical city they established to, to to help with the workers but they said that if we have too many then what will they need us for what happens when they realize they don't need us even they knew back then that robotic AIs, too many of them, was dangerous. So they decided not to do the robotic AI. They decided to start tampering with genetics, organics. So they genetically modified the existing hominid. Now, what they did initially, if you read these tablets, they didn't come to the first successful Homo sapien right away. They didn't even come to a Homo sapien right away. They began to clone these people that were already here genetically modify them with their DNA and everything, disconnect some of their DNA, get them to be understand their language and be obedient. And they had them starting to do labor. But the problem in the tablets was this. These people couldn't reproduce on their own. It's just like when you take a tiger and a lion, you get a you get a, a, a tigon or a lion and a tiger, you get a tigon. A lion and a tiger that mate can never, they can mate with something, but they're never going to be able to give birth. They're never going to get anybody pregnant or be a, or, or give birth to anything, right? They're bare. They, they're barren. They can't do it. Same thing was happening with our cousins. They said, damn, this is a slow process. We need a, we need an army of people now. These are GG. They're going to come back and they're going to be pissed. They're going to destroy us. They're going to destroy us. And Chris Jackson, did the internet could kill off the dinosaurs? Yes, they did, because they needed to make way for the workforce and the civilizations that they were building out here on this planet. They talk about using a directed asteroid attack or direct, direct comet strike. <clears throat> so, um, so this is pretty interesting. So they're like, you know, we gotta, we gotta speed this process up. Isis comes up with an idea. She says, you know what? I'm going to take the egg out of one of these beings. We're going to add our essence to it. I'm going to put that in my womb and carry it to term. So this was the first of the genetic experiment that led to the Homo sapien. There's a famous cylinder scroll at the British Museum with Isis holding up the baby saying, my hands have created it. The first Adamu, which means first man. The Adamu, which means first man. And so she put, the, put this egg in her womb. Now, creating an egg in this way or, or in fertilization in that way is called creating a zygote in modern genetics, or what we call modern genetics today, she created a zygote. She inserted it into her womb. It attached. She went 10 months, according to the tablets, not nine, gave birth to Adamu. After she gave birth to Adamu, once they got it to a mature state, they then had him begin to mate with some of these other beings that they had already been tampering with. Didn't work. Mating didn't work. Mating didn't work. They kept trying to mate, mate, mate. This is in the Eden, E-D-I-N. It clearly states in the tablets, it's E-D-I-N, Eden. In the Bible, it's Eden. Isn't that interesting? Eden was a gigantic 
outdoor laboratory with guards. The, Bible, the same guards have the same guards at the there. gates there. And these guards have weapons in the Bible. They got weapons in the Sumerian tablets. You better not try to go in or out. They're keeping you in and they're keeping the people on the outside out. And then what happens? They say, well, this ain't working. We can't make this guy. It's it, he, his sperm. Let me check the sperm again. His sperm is working. It's swimming. But it's not working with these other beings. We got to do something else. So they, what they do, they take some of his own DNA. They clone him into, or they clone Eve out of him. Then they mate him and Eve. And guess what? Bingo. It worked. She gets pregnant. Oh, now we got the formula. Now we got, we don't have to keep making these damn clones. It's a lot of work. So now Adam and Eve is the first genetically modified homo sapien sapien that can mate with each other and have babies. So they begin to then reproduce that same experiment by taking eggs out of other women, inserting them into wombs of Anunnaki women, having them give birth and give, they call them the Hathors. These are the Hathors, all right? These are the Hathors that you learned about in ancient Egypt. Uh, somebody says, do you know how our cousins got here? Yes, I do. If you talk to the ancient uh, well, the, the aboriginals, the aboriginals who I met in, in, in um, Australia, according to them, uh, in ancient times, they were seated on this planet by Pleiadians. That is their verbal handed down history for thousands of years. Not just them, also the indigenous natives of Amer of the North and South Americas. Same exact story. Interesting that this is an abandoned seed planet, that they seeded this planet with people. And then some period of time went by, they were gone. Then these Anunnaki people arrive and say, yeah, hey, these people are just abandoned here. They don't even know what they're doing. They're just trying, trying to learn how to develop themselves from scratch. And they took advantage of it. So back to the story. So they they now have this mating thing going on. They've been, you, the Hathors have been uh, doing these birthing houses, reproducing the same experiment with Adam and Eve. And now we've got, because you have to have a genetic pool. You can't create, listen to me, people. If you're a grown person right now, if you're a grown up and you still believe that two people can create 8 billion people because we got 8 billion people on earth right now, there's something wrong with you. I'm not insulting you. I'm just saying you got to rethink who you are and how, you're, how high your intelligence level is. I'm, I'm just saying. Because if you go and have sex with your sister right now, you already know that baby going to be retarded. You know this for a fact. It's going to be this, this, a dis disabled baby, disabilities coming out the womb every time. And over time, by the third or fourth generation, it's going to be all kind of malformed disabilities, right? So if we know that for a fact, then what makes you think that Adam and Eve is going to create 8 billion people? Two people are going to create 8 billion. We got to really begin to think here. That's not what happened. The tablets tell you exactly what happened. It wasn't just Adam and Eve. They then created birthing houses where they duplicated the experiment with other Anunnaki women, giving birth more to more and more of these homo sapiens sapiens, creating a gene pool that they built up so that they can intermingle and inter, inter, uh, intermate and create babies. When you go into the, um, into the Bible, Old Testament, you find out that obviously Cain killed Abel, right? Uh, over a dispute because one was jealous that God was having more favor over the other one's uh, offering and, and so forth and so on. So out of jealousy, he killed his brother. Now what happens? God comes back, but who's the God? God is Yahweh. Who is Yahweh in the Bible? And Lil. <laughs> and Lil comes back, according to the ancient tablets, and he's asking like, hey, what's going on here? Because by then, you know, uh, he, re he realizes that he killed the brother. There's a murder going on. One of the ver one of the first re recorded murders in biblical history, but not in history itself, because in the ancient tablets, there's a million murders going on. And it's like, what? Why'd you do this? And so forth. And so he's telling him what happened. He's ashamed and everything else. He's kicked out of Eden. He's kicked out of the laboratory because this guy's violent now. And he goes, "What?" Cain says something very important in the biblical text. He says, "The people out there will kill me. The people out there." will kill me. What people? There's only supposed to be a couple of people on this planet. What, what, what people out there? 
If it's Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel, then what people are out there that's going to kill you? There were already hundreds of thousands of people out there living, working, and everything else when Cain was actually born. And then what does God say in the Bible? He says, uh, don't worry, I'm going to put a mark on you. My mark, my brand, I'm going to brand you so that the people out there know you my boy and they won't touch you. That's what the Bible says. That's exactly what the Bible says, right? And so they brand him. He knows that, hey, okay, don't touch this guy. He's a Canaan. That's where the Canaanites came from, all right? And so this is what happened with the Cain. With with uh with Cain. So he, he there were people already out there. God says to him, you you'll know your wife. You'll meet her. You'll meet this woman. You'll find a woman out there. You guys are gonna fall in love, and you're gonna build this whole Canaanite kingdom. That's the Bible said. So people were already out there. His wife was already outside of Eden. She existed already. There wasn't two people giving birth to 8 billion people. Stop thinking that. Stop teaching that to your kids, please. I'm begging you. It's foolishness. If you believe that, then start going having sex with your relatives right now. See what happens when you when your baby come out. Just see what happens. It didn't happen that way. Read these tablets. It tells you exactly what happens. These beings were mating. They had creating this mating farm, this mating laboratory called Eden. And Enlil was known as the Lord. He was known as Satan, the Lord of Eden. Satan, the Lord of Eden. Satan. You want to wonder where that came from? <laughs> yeah, he's Satan. The snake that was in the in the garden was his brother. Enki, Enki came with the knowledge to uh, to Adam and Eve and told them that they were they were stronger and bigger and brighter and that when he did the genetic tinkering that he put a little extra in them that one day in the future they would be able to tap back into it and they themselves could rise higher than the Anunnaki and his brother found out about this and started calling him the devil and that information is in the myth of Adapa do they have that book down here or oh, upstairs the myth of Adapa which is another incredible ancient text, cuneiform text that's available. The myth, I did a whole thing with Matthew LaCroix on the myth of Adapa. It's so powerful. In the Bible where it's talking about the saying that, you know, the angels were jealous of human beings because they were going to be exalted higher than them. That comes from the myth of Adapa. Ancient text that's talking about human beings, us, being created at a higher level, but not knowing we were than the Anunnaki themselves. We have to tap back into our DNA. We have to tap back into the, into our, what they're calling junk and plug it back in. We have to tap into our pineal gland and our higher consciousness. We have to tap back into our frequencies, get back on the frequency uh, mode of love, understanding, empathy, ser service to others. And also then tap into all of our innate gifts that we naturally have. Things that they had to enhance with technology were built into our avatar bodies. Psychic abilities, telekinesis, intuition, all these the extrasensory perceptions that we don't think we even know exist in our bodies, but they're there, just lying dormant, waiting for us to tap back into them. So did the, did the Anunnaki create human beings? Not exactly. They genetically modified our ancestors, which turned us into Homo sapiens sapien. And in actuality, all of us are Anunnaki because we all have the DNA of these beings running through our veins today. Well, we've got to begin to train people to take on positions of power that are conscious and go on the inside. And when they're inside, then they do what they have to do to break the system down, press the right buttons, expose the right information, whatever it is. But we have to begin to infiltrate these systems in this matrix that exists. Uh, so that we can break it down from the inside out. We can't st keep staying on the outside of these systems and thinking that we're going to have this massive change that just crops up. We have to have conscious people get in and infiltrate from the inside, and then you'll see the curtain begin to fall. So I think if you get inside and you begin to collapse it, you know, break it down from the inside, it, it forces a new paradigm. It forces a new system to rise from the ashes. You know, if you're, if you're in there, and it's got to be obviously more than just one person. If there's people going in in droves that are really trying to go into the, all these different systems and really collapse these systems. It's like a mission. It's almost like a suicide mission in a way, to be honest with you. But we got, at some point, somebody has to have enough courage to, to help these systems collapse and they got to collapse from the inside. Cause once they're going down, a new system can rise up from the ashes like a phoenix. 
If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.